Good evening, church. It felt wrong not to do something on Monday, Thursday uh, this year, knowing that uh, typically we gather together with St. Paul's and celebrate this evening and recognize this evening together. This year, uh, Chuck and I are each doing our own thing, uh, and so we're glad that you come and joined us here this evening uh, through Facebook Live. Monday, Thursday is, uh, I know, it kind of feels like in this season, the days all run together and you're not sure what day it is. And maybe that's what we're talking about here. Uh, it's uh, what day of the week is it? It's Tuesday, Monday, Thursday, not sure. But Monday, Thursday has a special meaning. The word Monday is out of the Latin word that means commandment. It's a commandment that we recognize from Christ. And so we share together this evening in this word from the Gospel of John. From John 13, 1. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And so he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said to everyone, said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord. And rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do what I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. This passage from John is why we call it Monday Thursday or Commandment Thursday. It is that commandment from Christ to go and wash one another's feet that we particularly remember on this evening. You'll notice that in John's gospel, in his description of the account of the evening, he makes no mention of communion, which is typically one of our church focuses in this evening. We focus so dearly on God giving himself to us, Christ's presence filling us, that we maybe neglect to look at John and and see that, that he didn't focus on that part of the evening. The part of the evening that he saw was when Jesus cleansed his followers, when he washed them and he did a servant's job cleaning their feet. took water in a basin. He took a towel 
and he knelt at their feet. He knelt on his knees and served the role of a servant, putting himself at the lowest position he could as an example of what we're to do. Peter, just like any of us might have done, says, if feet are good enough, do the rest. Bathe me from head to toe, Christ. But Peter was missing the point, wasn't he? The waters of our church, the waters of baptism, when we are made into Christians, we are brought into that family of Christ by submersion or sprinkling or pouring. However, we're baptized, we're made Christians in that moment. But it's that act that comes with it that really shows our heritage. The things that we do that make us Christians. Not to become Christians, but as an expression of our Christianity. When we too gather around one another and we wash one another's feet. Now, in our society, we have this kind of maybe icky feeling. And we should. Feet are gross. But that reaction is not different than the ones that they would have had in ancient Israel. In fact, it would have been significantly more disgusting. The roads were primarily dirt. They had animals walking the streets. Their shoes were not encased and and maybe covering of their whole foot. And so their feet, by the end of the day, would be filthy, covered in dirt and, and matted mud from sweat. Feet are gross. And that's the point. Christ is willing to lower himself to the lowest position and serve. And that's what we see on the cross. That Christ takes the role of our sacrifice. He takes on our sin. He takes on our death. He takes on the punishment that we deserve because we don't serve. We we step on top of one another trying to get to the top. We put people under our feet instead of kneeling to theirs. And Christ acknowledges that. And he goes to the cross anyway. He goes to the cross and dies the death that you deserve, that I deserve. A humiliating death. A death reserved for the worst of the worst, the the most terrible criminals, the people who deserve the worst punishment. That's the punishment that Christ receives. And he says that we must do that too. In our other Gospels, Christ creates more imagery around his death and around his resurrection, and he gives us the imagery of communion. Of course, in this season, our cup is empty and our plate is barren. As we yearn for one another, And we yearn for one another's presence. And we yearn to come together to experience that gift of the Eucharist, the great thanksgiving, communion. As we strive to want to be part of those with one another. It gives us maybe a picture of what it felt like to be in the world before Christ had died. To be unfilled to feel lost, to feel waiting. Maybe that imagery, maybe that feeling that we have in our hearts might help us to more deeply understand this holy weekend. It might help us to more fully understand the feeling of the disciples as they are waiting in the garden this very evening, waiting in the garden and they hear rustling And they see people walking up with torches and swords and they come to capture Jesus and to drag him away. 
Maybe the hopelessness that we feel as we're trapped in our homes might help us to more fully understand why Peter denied Christ. What else was he going to do? Maybe the way that we gather alone in our homes with our families, huddled together, might help us to more fully understand the fear that the early Christians experienced hiding from the Roman persecutors. Maybe this evening, as we sit in our homes on Facebook Live, for a taste of that togetherness, a taste of that being one community again, maybe we'll be reminded and be pushed forward to looking forward to when we get to celebrate in that communion together again. But especially in this COVID-19 season, especially in this COVID-19 world, maybe, just maybe, we would remember the foot washing first. Maybe, just maybe, we'd be reminded of Christ the servant. That we would be drawn to search and to yearn and to strive for more and more opportunities to be a presence of Christ in the lives of the people who are the most vulnerable in this world. Maybe it will drive us to want to serve one another in whatever way that we can. Maybe that is as simple as writing a card or a letter to somebody who is in the nursing home or giving a phone call to one of the members of our church who you know are at risk and so aren't going out for groceries and those things. Maybe if you're younger and not at risk, it means calling those you know who are and asking them what groceries they need, asking them what they need and how they need to be served. That's the imagery that Christ gives us to live by. Jews gather on this evening and last evening for a meal that they call the Seder meal. And it's in remembrance and it's a way of of looking back and reenacting and re-remembering the Exodus story. In Exodus 12, we read, The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is is to be you, the first month, the first month of your year. Tell the whole community of Israel that the 10th day of this month, each man is to take the lamb from his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with the nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people they are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with each person will eat. The animals you choose must be be year old, males without defect, and you may take from them the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them in twilight. Then they are to take the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of their houses where they eat the lambs. That same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be assigned on, for you on the house of who you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Not destructive, no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it at a festival of the Lord, a lasting ordinance. This meal that we remember, this meal that Jesus had with his disciples was an echo of all of the meals that Israel had been having for generations and generations and generations. Remembering what God did in Egypt, 
remembering that when the plagues came, when death and destruction came, it was through the Passover lamb's blood that Israel was spared. Christ is our Passover. His blood is smeared and spread on the door frames of our hearts so that when destruction does come, we might be passed over. This story we remember, this story we tell one another, this story we share to all Christians. Jews on this evening, when they gather for this meal, ask one another, what makes tonight different? Why is tonight different than other nights? For us as Christians, is because it is the night that started this holy weekend. It's the night when Jesus was captured. It's the night that he was drugged into a kangaroo court of the, of the Pharisees who judged him guilty. We're told in scripture that they did their best to find false witnesses against Christ, but they couldn't find any. This kangaroo court found him guilty and tomorrow he would be drugged into the streets and the people, those same people who has on Sunday shouted, Hosanna, rescue us, God, come and be our God. Those same people now shout crucify him. Kill him. The same voices. Our same voices. This holy week, this close of Lent, this whole Lenten season reminds us of our own sin, our own brokenness, and our own need of healing and grace. And Monday, Thursday shows us the start of of how we work out of that through being filled by the body and the blood of Christ, that body broken for you and the blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. And through service and kneeling of our own selves and putting our own wants, our own desires second and washing the feet of others in every opportunity that we have. It is through those acts and through those ways of being with and in and part of Christ that we make it through Lent, that we make it through Holy Week, and that we make it through this COVID-19 season. We must be the body. We must search and find ways to continue to be the body through phone calls, cards, letters. And we must find ways to serve one another. Making masks, supporting the food pantry, supporting the mask ministry, and being present and being intentional in our relationships with God in this season and growing in the likeness of Christ while we have this opportunity to do so. Friends, I pray that tomorrow you would join us for our prayer cruise. We're going to be driving around the community and lifting up our community in prayer, pouring prayer of blessing and grace and healing over our community. Tomorrow at noon here on the Facebook page, we'll be posting a reading of the passion story by all of the pastors of our community. Watch it with your family. Follow around, along in your own Bibles. Pour the scripture into your heart and be filled by it. And on Sunday, join us for Easter worship where though we don't gather and though we continue to physically be in a season of Lent, 
in a season without, we still know and we still trust and we still believe that Christ is risen. Friends, be blessed this evening. And may God keep you and yours in the palm of his hand. And his blessings would overflow in and through you. Amen.